The movie kicks off in San Pedro, California, the night before Keaton looks worn out and damaged. Nearby a shadowy figure is seen. As this figure approaches, it becomes clear that Keaton recognizes him. With a hint of disbelief in his voice, he addresses the man as Kaiser. Without hesitation, Kaiser shoots Keaton and then ignites the boat in flames. Unknown to Kaiser, someone is hidden close by witnessing the entire event. In our next scene, we find Verbal Kent speaking with the police. Verbal is a low-level trickster who has cerebral palsy and isn't shy about sharing his thoughts. He takes us back to an event that happened six weeks ago. A truck was hijacked in Queens. In response, the police decided to make a statement. They rounded up several known criminals, labeling them as the usual suspects. Among the rounded up suspects are Verbal himself and Keaton. Joining them are Michael McManus, Fred Fenster, and Todd Hockney. All of these men have histories as con artists and criminals. The police organize a lineup where each suspect is asked to read specific lines. The men comply not happily and even crack jokes along the way. In the aftermath of the lineup, each of the suspects is interviewed individually. Though they're confident in their innocence, most of them can't resist playfully teasing the police officers. However, the situation is different for Keaton, a former police officer. The tension between him and the police is palpable. This becomes evident when one officer even whacks Keaton in the face. Now back in jail, the five suspects start piecing together the reasons for their arrest. They're all puzzled about who among them might have stolen from that truck. Keaton claims he's left his criminal past behind, but the others are skeptical. Nobody admits to any wrongdoing. They suspect the police are playing games with them. In response, they come up with a plan to hit back. They'll commit a crime together. Conveniently, McManus already has a suitable heist in mind. Now returning to the present, at the site of Keaton's murder, the FBI arrives to investigate. Leading the team is Jack Bear. The scene is grim. Fifteen people have died and it seems the toll will rise. Bear goes to a nearby hospital where a person who survived the attack, a Hungarian man, is barely clinging to life. Despite appearing delirious, the Hungarian survivor suddenly starts shouting a name, Kaiser Soze. This is enough to grab Bayer's full attention. In the meantime, U.S. Customs agent Dave Kujan is eager to talk to Verbal, who survived about the night of the attack. Verbal has secured some immunity by agreeing to talk, and the officer overseeing the case, Jeff Rabin, informs Kujan that they've gotten all they can from Verbal. However, Kujan is not satisfied. He's determined to find out why that ship was attacked, what happened to the drugs, and most importantly, whether Keaton is truly dead. Kujan asks Verbal to start from the beginning. He starts rambling about being part of an old barbershop quartet, seemingly more caught up in his own thoughts. Kujan interrupts him and pushes Verbal to stick to the details. He even resorts to a bit of blackmail, though it doesn't seem entirely necessary. Now, taking a step back into the past, we see Keaton with his partner, who is a lawyer. Keaton is worried about how this relentless pursuit by the cops will never end, and it's jeopardizing his chances of leading a clean, lawful life. Verbal and the rest of the crew are still eager to go through with their planned job, but they need Keaton. Verbal visits Keaton's home to plead with him to join them. He tells Keaton that the others won't let him participate unless Keaton is involved. He has a strategy for completing the job without any violence. Keaton is hesitant but also desperate, so he joins in. The job, as Verbal lays out, is quite straightforward. To steal a collection of emeralds from a smuggling ring that the police themselves operate. As the plan unfolds, the corrupt cops intercept the smuggler carrying the emeralds. The team discreetly follow the smuggler, and at the right moment, they pull him over. With guns drawn and pointed at their faces, they forcefully demand the emeralds. There's a tense exchange, and a bit of violence is necessary. But eventually, they succeed in obtaining the emeralds. Acting swiftly, they make their escape, managing to get away before additional police officers arrive at the scene. In the present, Verbal is recounting all these events to Kujan. However, Kujan seems fixated on Keaton, firmly convinced that he was the brains behind their operation. He shares with Verbal the details of Keaton's shady past, including an incident where he had faked his own death. Verbal refuses to believe any negative assertions about him, showing a sense of loyalty toward Keaton. Meanwhile, in the hospital, the Hungarian man mentions the name Kaiser Soze again. The police then ask him to describe him to a sketch artist. The Hungarian agrees and begins to collaborate with the police. Kujan now threatens to have Verbal's immunity revoked. He's convinced that Keaton is the mastermind and wants the truth. Verbal, feeling cornered, mentions a lawyer named Kobayashi, who, as Verbal suggests, is a key figure in these tragic events. Upon arriving in Los Angeles, the group, known as the Usual Suspects, connects with a man named Redfoot, who is their contact for selling the emeralds. 
While they are in the midst of this transaction, Redfoot presents them with an opportunity for another job. Redfoot informs them about a jeweler he knows who usually carries a significant amount of cash. He proposes that they steal this cash. Initially, Keaton is opposed to the idea, however after some persuasion he reluctantly agrees. During the planned heist the group waits for their target. As soon as he and his bodyguards arrive, the five men launch their attack. A chaotic struggle ensues and two members of their gang are killed by McManus, and Verbal himself is forced to kill another. Unexpectedly there is no cash, all they find are scores of cocaine. Feeling betrayed, the group confronts Redfoot, accusing him of setting them up. Redfoot, however, shifts the blame, revealing that he received the job from a lawyer named Kobayashi. Keaton insists on meeting Kobayashi. Redfoot responds saying that Kobayashi would like to meet them also. Back in the present, Kujan is starting to sense that there's more to the story than meets the eye. Before he can delve deeper, he's called out to speak with Agent Bear. Bear says there were no drugs on the ship and the entire scenario was a setup. Bear then brings up the name Kaiser Soze, asking Kujan if he's familiar with it. While Kujan doesn't recognize the name, Verbal does. The mention of Kaiser Soze seems to stir a reaction in Verbal. The group arranges a meeting with Kobayashi. During the meeting, Kobayashi admits he wasn't aware of the cocaine involved, but reveals that his employer is pleased with the outcome. The jeweler, who was an enemy of Kobayashi's employer, is now dead. Kobayashi then entices them with an offer of another job, promising a staggering $91 million reward. It's at this moment that Kobayashi reveals the identity of his employer, Kaiser Soze. This revelation immediately captures the full attention of the men. The mention of this name puts the men on edge. All except Verbal who doesn't know, Kobayashi proceeds to outline a series of past jobs, each executed by one of the men present in the room. Each of these jobs in some way, affected Kaiser Soze and his business operations. Kobayashi then presents a deal. If the men agree to carry out this new, highly dangerous job, Kaiser Soze will consider their debt to him settled and leave them in peace. The task given is to disrupt a drug shipment from a Hungarian gang, Kaiser Soze has been competing with. Verbal, now back in conversation with Kujan tells him about Kaiser, Verbal recounts an old tale. One day, Kaiser returns home to find his family held hostage by a rival gang. In a shocking and brutal turn, Soze killed his own wife and children, eliminating the leverage the gang had over him. He then mercilessly killed the Hungarian gang members responsible for the hostage situation. Kaiser then embarked on a campaign of vengeance, targeting everyone even remotely connected to the break-in at his home. After this, he vanished. Kujan, intrigued and also skeptical, asks why Verbal hadn't mentioned this harrowing story about Kaiser Soze earlier. Verbal feared he would seem crazy, he admits also to being genuinely terrified at the prospect of Soze coming after him. In Verbal's mind, it's not a question of if Soze will come for him but when. In a flashback, Verbal reveals that Fenster had disappeared, driven by fear of the consequences of working for Kaiser Soze. Their worst fears are confirmed when they find Fenster's body later that night dead. The men debate to flee and Verbal himself sides with this. They instead decide to track down Kobayashi and kill him if needed. The group successfully tracks down Kobayashi. They manage to isolate him in an empty room, killing his guard in the process. Fueled by anger over Fenster's death, they confront Kobayashi seeking retribution. Kobayashi clarifies that Kaiser Soze killed him. He then adds very casually that Keaton's partner is upstairs, solidifying Soze's control over the group. The group comes to terms with the fact that they have little choice but to proceed with the job. The four remaining men survey the boat to plan their heist. With far too much security, Keaton bluntly states that they all will die. However, with no other options, they get to work. On the night of the heist, the group positions themselves around the boat. McManus takes up a sniper position while the others are on the ground. Before the operation commences, Keaton tells Verbal to stay behind as a contingency plan and also to relay to his partner if things go south. Verbal agrees and stays behind. The men involved in the drug deal assemble on the docks, and Keaton boldly steps out to meet them, with McManus providing cover and Hockney, adopting a casual demeanor, walks down another dock, blending into the scene. Suddenly, a bomb detonates, creating chaos and devastation, effectively having the harbor. In the ensuing confusion, a fierce gunfight breaks out. McManus, from his rooftop position and Hockney on the ground engage in the firefight, bullets whizzing through the air. Despite the intense crossfire, the three men manage to survive the initial onslaught. McManus then moves onto the boat, aggressively taking down anyone in his path. Meanwhile, Hockney heads towards the van where the cash is stored. He reaches it, and for a brief moment appears triumphant. However, he is suddenly shot from behind and killed. A casualty McManus is unaware of amidst the chaos. In the present, 
the body of a known informant was found, someone who was desperate and was willing to give information on Soze. It turns out the whole operation was a ruse just to kill this informant. Back to the night, the informant is hidden in a room, knowing all too well what is to come. Keaton and McManus manage to find each other on the boat. There, they discover the true nature of the setup. McManus separates from Keaton to look for anything on the boat. Simultaneously, it is revealed by Verbal that the informant was killed by Kaiser, his identity a mystery. Amidst this unfolding chaos, McManus suddenly drops dead with a knife in his back. Shortly after, Verbal, fleeing the scene of the crime, watches Keaton get gunned by Kaiser. Kujan questions why Verbal didn't intervene when he saw Kaiser Soze. Verbal confesses that he was paralyzed by fear. Kujan speculates that Keaton is actually Kaiser Soze and says that Verbal living was all part of his plan. Verbal admits Keaton had a bigger part in all the jobs and even breaks down crying after Kujan points out how pathetic he was to believe him. Kujan dismisses Verbal from the station. He then notices something, a board with random clippings, including those mentioned by Verbal during the case, Redfoot, Kobayashi and the barbershop quartet. Realizing this Kujan rushes out to find Verbal. Outside, Verbal continues limping, until his limp disappears, his posture straightens, then he suddenly isn't crippled anymore. Meanwhile the sketch comes through, revealing Kaiser Soze is Verbal. At the same moment, Verbal enters a car with Kobayashi as the driver and the movie concludes.